Hi everyone, this is Fred with GetMeCoding.com. You could also call me Mr. Fred as we move through this tutorial here. So what we have going on now is the next step in working with Scratch and it starts to get a little more interesting in the sense now that we're gonna actually be using sensing. Okay, so you know that in any kind of video game or any kind of animation where you wanna have your sprites interacting with each other, they have to be aware that they're actually there. So what we're gonna start to do is do a quick tutorial where we're gonna have a ball First of all, basketball bounce around on the screen by itself. Okay, so to do that, we're going to actually use an event when clicked, and we're going to use the motion which makes things move, which we did in an earlier tutorial. Nothing too surprising there, right? So now we're going to begin to control it. We want this ball to bounce forever. So we're going to use a loop that's going to run, well, forever. Now, if I bring that in here and I move 10 steps, I could see that if I run it right now, it goes there and stops. Well, that's not good, so I bring it back out. Now, what I also have is in the motion section here, in the motion blocks, there's actually a really, really great block called if on the edge bounce. So now I'm going to bring that in here to my loop so that it's always going to be doing these blocks within this loop. See, that's that little arrow is here. It's basically going around and around and around. So now when I run this particular set of blocks, I can see the ball bouncing back and forth. Eh, not quite the effect I want. I want this ball to be able to bounce all around these, these, uh, these walls. So I'm going to stop that. To do that, I can actually start to change, well, the way the direction of the ball is going to bounce. Now, we learn from our math classes, and if you have a basic understanding of the clock, if we know that the 12 is the zero position, and that move that clock hand starts to move to one o'clock, then two o'clock, then three o'clock, and then all the way down to six o'clock, then to nine o'clock, it's going around in a circle, and a circle is broken up into what are known as degrees. Now, if that's an, if that's something they haven't learned in school yet, you will, but that's the way we also have to understand the way the screen is laid out and so that we have uh, our sprite moving around. So we're going to point this into a different direction. Now if I add this in here, it will allow me to continue to bounce the ball, but nothing new happens. So what can I do here? I'm going to change this and I'm going to click this drop down and still not quite the, the numbers I want, but I'm going to change it to what is half of 90, which is an angle known as 45. I change that to 45 and now watch the effect that I get. Now the ball begins to bounce at a 45 degree angle. A little bit more realistic in terms of a way a ball would bounce off of a surface if it was coming in at an angle. All right, pretty neat, right? So there you go. That is the, that's a little bit of a sensing right there on the edge. But what if we want to have another sprite interact with a sprite? So say you have a space game or you have maybe instead of ball, maybe you would have asteroids bouncing around the screen. Now, what if you had to navigate a spaceship so it would avoid the, uh, the, the asteroids? Or what if we created a Pong-like game where we had a paddle and we hit the ball? All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use a paddle. I'm going to go out... I'm going to find a paddle in my library, and there it is. It's already built for me. I can bring it in. Now, what I'm going to do with this paddle is I'm going to, I'm going to start to set it up so that it moves around the screen. To make it move around the screen, I'm going to have it follow my mouse. So everywhere I put the mouse, when we start the animation, and we're going to have a loop forever because it's going to be going on until we end the we click the, the uh, stop. I'm going to say go to the mouse pointer. See that? Go to wherever the mouse pointer is. So let's see how that works now. I'm going to run it and look at that. The paddle is now following my mouse. Kind of neat. But look it. It goes through the ball. And that goes back to the other, uh, the other concept or the idea of sensing. The sprite has to sense the other sprite. So that's where we create, you know, we, we understand that the sprites are independent of each other, but we have an illusion that we have to create that they actually hit each other. To do that, we're going to add some blocks to the ball. So the ball will sense when it hits the paddle. To do that, we're going to come in and add another event when clicked. 
and we're going to use another loop forever, right? So we keep on sensing forever. And now we're going to add something that's new. This is known as a conditional logic element or an if then statement. So what is an if then statement? It basically reads like this. If it's raining outside, then put on your raincoat. If it's snowing outside, then put on a coat. If you're thirsty, then drink water. So it's you check to see if something is happening, and then if it is, then do something else. And that's what this if then is gonna allow us to do. We're gonna put this in our loop, and we're gonna say, if the ball is touching the paddle, then make it bounce off of it. Now to do that, we can actually go to this area known as sensing. And we're gonna come in here, and if it's touching, and notice when we bring this in, we're going to snap this right into this spot right here. See how it highlights? Drop it in, but click that drop down, and you'll notice that the paddle is there. Once again, we're applying these particular scripts or these blocks to the ball, not the paddle. Then we're going to go back into motion, and we're going to turn the ball when it hits it, so it goes off into a different direction, and we're going to rotate it. So once again, it's done in degrees, and that's the going, ar going around a circle. There's 360 degrees. So we'll change this value in here. Oh, I can't click it. and we're gonna make it 180 degrees, which is, a, which is the opposite direction. So if there's 360 degrees in a circle, so if you were to go around a circle, in a complete circle, it would be 360 to start and then come back to where you began. 180 would be half of that circle. Now, to somewhat slow it down just a little bit so it doesn't look too fast, we can wait one second. Let's give it a try. There's my paddle, I'm moving it around the screen. There we go, I bounced the ball. It's hitting the paddle. So, now you get the chance to see how some basic sensing works and how we start to have the sprites detect each other.